In a typical game, there are sprites that are only used for one object, like the player character for example, and there are those sprites that are used multiple times, like arrows, bullets, or grenades. When we have many identical or similar objects like this, we need a way of organizing them together to make them easier to work with. Python lists are an obvious choice here, but Pygame has its own way of holding multiple sprite objects together, which is the group class. Before we can begin using groups, we first need to understand sprite classes. I'll start by creating a standard Python class for a square here. I've got my constructor, which takes the arguments of the color and x and y coordinates. I then create a surface that I assign to this self.image variable. I fill that with a color, create a rectangle from it, and then position the rectangle at the x and y coordinates. So far, this is just a regular Python class. I then create an instance of it. So I'll create an individual square using that class. And if I print this instance out, it's going to tell me that this is a square object taken from the square class. What we need is the functionality of the Pygame sprite class. That means that we need to inherit those properties into this Python class. And to do that, we simply pass the name of the class into the brackets here, which is pygame.sprite.sprite. After that, within our own constructor, we need to call the sprite classes constructor as well. So we'll call that sprite class again, pygame.sprite.sprite, and then we call the init method from it. Now the square class is going to be a child of the sprite class. All of the properties and features that are within the sprite class are going to be inherited into the square class. If I print this out again, the same instance, it now recognizes that this is a child of the sprite class. Next, let's have a look at sprite groups. So we can get rid of this and we'll create a sprite group. So I'll say that squares is equal to pygame.sprite.group. And now if we print this out, we'll see that we have a group with zero sprites inside it. I can now add that square from before into this group. I can say squares.add square. And if we run this again to see the print statement, it now says that there's one sprite within the group. Already we can see how this makes it easy to organize our sprites together. Now let's go a little deeper into these groups. I'll switch over to the starter code, which you can find in the video description if you want to follow along. It's got the game window created and the frame rate defined. Then down here is the sprite class that we just set up, as well as the group and the square that we added into it. Below that, I have my game loop, and in here, all I'm doing is printing out the squares group. If I run this again, we get this cyan background, and it's down here saying that we have one item in the group. The square class inherited a couple of methods from the sprite class that we can use here. Just here, I'm going to call the update method, and below that, I'm going to call the draw method. Notice that both of these are being called on the group. If I run this, I get this red square in the middle of the screen. So it all seems to be working correctly, but some of you may have noticed that I never created these methods, the draw and the update method, in my class. If we go back up here, all I have is the constructor. But somehow it works, even though there's no blitz statement in sight. These methods belong to the sprite class, and so they already exist. They were inherited by our square class. We will come back to the update method shortly, but first let's look at how to create multiple instances and put them into the group, because that's the whole point of using groups. Now back up here, I'm going to define a few colors so that all the squares don't look the same. And then I'll add a new event into my event handler down here. This event checks for mouse clicks, which is the mouse button down event. I then record the mouse coordinates and I use them to create a square object, which I then add into my squares group. Notice that when I'm choosing the colors here, I'm using the random module. So I need to make sure that that's imported right at the top to avoid any errors. Now, when I run this, I can click multiple times and create a whole bunch of individual squares and all of them are being drawn by the draw method on the group. Now it's time to go back to that update method. We inherit this method from the sprite class, but it's just a placeholder. So we don't get an error when we call it, but it doesn't actually have any functionality. To overwrite it, we need to define our own update method. I'm going to create it up here, just below my constructor. And inside it, all I'm going to have for now is a line that moves the rectangle down in the Y coordinate by five pixels. And now, as I click to create squares, you notice that they fall off the bottom of the screen. I didn't have to apply this to each square individually or iterate through a list. By applying this method to the group, it automatically applies it to each square inside that group. There is one issue that comes with it though, and you can see that in this print statement. Although the squares all seem to fall off the screen and disappear, they are still stored inside the group. We can't see them anymore, but Pygame is still continuing to process them and move them infinitely down. This might not seem like much of an issue, but each of these sprites is taking up memory and processing time, and in larger games with many sprites, this could affect performance. And this brings us on to another useful feature of groups, which is the kill method. We will add an extra check to the update method here. So when the square goes off the bottom of the screen, 
it's removed completely from the group by calling self.kill. Now when we run this, notice that as soon as a square goes off the screen, it's removed completely from the group. A final useful feature of groups is collision detection, since it allows us to quickly check for collision with all the items within the group. This is done using the sprite collide method, which takes the following arguments. Sprite, which is the individual sprite being checked. Group, which is the group that contains all the objects to check for collision with that sprite. Do kill is a boolean value that when set to true will trigger the self kill method to remove the colliding sprite from the group. And collided is the callback function for the type of collision required. If nothing is passed, then this will be done using rectangle collision, but other methods like circle and mass collision can be passed here instead. I've previously covered collision in detail in my previous tutorials, so I won't repeat that here, but I'll link them above if you want to learn more. If you found this video useful, then please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.